Hi, this is Alex Paul from AspenCore, and I'm here with my dear friend Bruce Renard. And, uh, well, he's an industry uh, professional for many years, Bruce, right? I mean, Many years, that's correct. We'll leave it at that. And I'm really glad that you're taking the time at this busy show. We're here at PCIM, and with new company, full of attention, you get a lot of people in the booth, and I'm glad you're taking the time to talk to us. Thanks, Alex. It's always a pleasure to talk with you as well. Now, okay, so let's start talking about this now. Uh, Pre-switch, I had been, uh, one of your uh, colleagues, uh, Alberto uh, Guerra, he was with International Rectifier, he kind of hinted at this a little bit ago. Where did the idea for Pre-switch come from? The idea came from a robotics engineer who was actually working on a Class D audio amplifier trying to remove distortion. And what he realized is that if we could pre-switch an extra transistor, he could actually eliminate switching losses. Well, you know, one of my jokes to my audience all the time is I learned everything I know from power electronics from uh, high-end audio. So it's very interesting that you came out of the audio space with the idea. But then again, waveform management, power management, headroom, it's all part of audio as well. That's right. So the breakthrough here is we've invented a process for a forced resident soft switching architecture that works in any topology and any application and self-adjusts inside the circuit. And that's actually the next question I was going to ask you is that if you're going to do a resonant soft switching topology, it's not a very stable approach depending upon voltage swings and the like. So you need something to monitor it and you're going to you have it. Is it chip or how are you working that? So what we did is we created a separate piece of uh, embedded AI that, that adjusts on a cycle by cycle basis and we predict what we need to switch the switch type and then we measure the results. And we store that and we, and we can, it gives us a lot of unique advantages. But the net net is that we can eliminate approximately 80% of IGBT switching losses and 95% of silicon carbide switching losses. I have an analogy that is coming into my head and I'm gonna tell you the analogy and you tell me if it's an appropriate analogy, okay? okay? Um, a modern fighter jet is an unstable device, it's, right? It uses fly-by-wire to maintain its uh, position and all because it uses the instability to be more maneuverable. This AI watching the resonant drive of the IGBT is almost similar to that, is it, or am I not right no, there? It's a great analogy. Basically, we take an unstable circuit and we, we apply intelligence to keep it stabilized, and we, we do that on a cycle-by-cycle -cycle basis. Very, well, you have to be at least one cycle ahead or else you can't correct. That is also true. Now. Um, before I go too deep into that, because I want to ask you a lot more questions about the technical side, but I want, to, I want you to tell me a little bit more about, um, were the, uh, was it a case of you had problems that you wanted to, I know you, you say you found it through these uh, explorations in audio and these other circuits, were there any specific application issues that you wanted to address? Well, the main thing is when we realized that we could eliminate switching losses, it basically gave everybody the ideal transistor that everybody has been searching for for, for millions of years or a thousand, for, for the last 30 years, well, let's be clear. Okay, Bruce. Well, actually, and you're absolutely right, they are. So um, then my other question would be, how does the system monitor the, the power? How does it stay ahead of the performance? Well, there are approximately 12 different inputs we use, and we actually use some parasitics that people try to get rid of as an, as a, as a, uh, an information source. And we use that to exactly predict when to turn on the switches on. Very nice. Now, um, how much of a drop-in is this? How much of a redesign do I need to do to my board to get this technology into it? Well, cost is everything in the power community, so we had to make something that's very low cost. The fact is we can, we can use a, an RM10 inductor. We, we basically need one inductor and four capacitors and an auxiliary switch, and that is all we need to add to a circuit. Very nice. So I'm Joe Blow Engineer, or Engineeress, I don't want to leave our ladies out of this conversation, and I've got a problem, I come to you, how much hand-holding are you going to give me? How much support are you going to give me to get your supply, into your device into my supply? Well, we're not a major corporation yet, so what we've chosen to do is we've taken a very focused approach. So if customers want to engage with PreSwitch, we'd like to ask them to come to our website at www.preswitch.com. It's pre-switch and register with us. What we're doing is we're choosing a few focused customers that we're requiring a non-recurring engineering charge for, where we will engage and help them redesign their system with our architecture. Very cool. And so it's very low cost. Um, the key point here is that cost is everything. We can, we can eliminate a large portion of the, of the uh, cooling costs or a large portion of the inductive filter costs, depending on which direction you want. We can, we can switch 20 times faster for a silicon carbide, or we can switch five times faster for an IGBT. Or we can switch the IGBT at the same frequency and just save all the heat that you burnt through the switching losses. Very interesting. Now, what are... Are there any application spaces that you see that can especially benefit from this, or do you feel it's a silver bullet across the board? 
Well, the because you're going to add some component costs, uh, and uh, there's we feel like there's a today there's a limit of about a thousand watts and above where where we fit. But we also work well up into the gigawatt space, so there's no limit in terms of power as how as how high we can go. The applications are focused on anything using a half bridge, although we can we can work with any other topology. We can even work with multi-level, except it gets to be expensive to add to multi-level. In effect, we can offer five-level technology, five-level performance for a single, a single, a uh, simple half switch design. Very nice. Single level design. Very nice. Now, so having said that, um, what is the rough cost over, or is there a, can they get the costs taken out if they designed it in properly, or is it something that's going to be a small premium? Oh, sure, Alex. The, the key thing is that uh, the system level savings are huge compared to the cost to put it in there. And, uh, and that's because once you pay for the inductor and an extra switch and a couple of very small capacitors, uh, the rest of it's all gain. So the, all the costs you save in, in your heat sinking, or you can just use half the transistors, for instance, because now you don't you can allocate all the, the switching losses to conduction losses. So it's, it's very cost effective. Okay, now I got to ask you at least one hard question, even though you're a friend of mine. What would you say, let's say you were walking in from outside and looking in, what would you say to you as a challenge of where would you see an issue that someone may bring up that you want to address now to get it out of the way? Okay, good. So with any lead technology, the problem is, is making people believe it. We're making a lot of big claims here and people are standing back and saying, whoa, those are big. So what we encourage everyone to do is to come in and, and engage with us. We've got a couple different in, in, uh, evaluation profiles that can come check out, purchase from us, and verify our performance claims. If you look at our website, we've also had third party uh, customers also verify our performance claims. So the key thing is seeing is believing. And because the applications are so diverse, it's really hard to pick one technology to, to do before and after with. So what we've chosen to do is we've chosen to use a, a, an Econo dual gate driver board. You can take the old one off, put ours on, and now you can see the performance gains. We've also got a 10 kilowatt solar inverter, and we've also got a two kilowatt uh, solar inverter or inverter technology that, that people can see with their own eyes how good our technology is. Very nice. Okay, then before I let you go though, I want, do you have any last words? I mean, I've, I've been leading this conversation the whole time. Is there anything you wanted to let the audience know about? Well. So the switching loss reduction is only a key piece of it, but uh, what, what the chances are people don't understand is that when you switch faster, you run into a problem that's known as DVDT, and that is what d causes degradation on in motor bearings, on motor insulation, and on, on, in on inductors and reliabilities. But because we're forced with resident soft switching, we can actually adjust the, the, the DVDT to any level that the customer wants. What that means is now you can switch fast without the DVDT problems that you had before, and you get the benefits of having no switching losses. So the fact you don't have a DVDT and, and the switching losses are reduced enables people to run much higher switching frequencies. So if you just take that for a minute and think about it, what we've done is we've reset the expectation for the industry. You can now switch five times faster than where you did before, and that opens up a whole new world. For instance, uh, we think that in the EV space, we can now offer a better quality sine wave into the electric motor, which is going to increase the efficiency of the, of the actual e-mobility device. So we could give the, so now this, this limit that was held down by switching losses, that, that's what limited how fast it could switch an inductor, is, uh, is now capable of being used in, uh, at a much higher switching frequency, which puts a better quality sine wave into the motor, which extends the range of EV vehicles. We believe pre-switch technology can actually increase the EV vehicle range between 5 and 12 percent. And those are huge numbers when you consider the battery savings and the weight savings. We also think we can shrink power supplies dramatically, sometimes by a third or even, or, or even excuse me, by down to a third or even a fourth of what its original size was. So it's a 75 percent reduction in size, which is huge. Uh, so I want to encourage anyone doing onboard chargers or any one of those applications where space, weight, and size is a key uh, attribute, we can, we can help them with those technologies as well. Very cool, Bruce. I'm really glad you took the time to meet me and meet me at the show. I'm really glad. Thanks, Alex. It's the uh, first time we've done an interview together, but I think you did a nice job, and thanks for the opportunity to share our, our, te our technology with you. Pleasure's mine. Thanks.